Step into a world where 10 amazing women changed the game in the news world. Imagine a place where headlines tell stories not just of men, but of brave women who broke the rules to share the news. These incredible ladies didn't just report facts, they shook things up, challenged what people thought, and made sure the truth was heard. They faced tough times, but their stories are all about bravery and standing up for what's right. Join us on a journey through history to meet these awesome pioneers, the women who didn't just write headlines, they broke down barriers. Get ready for a video that's as exciting as the news they brought, the inspiring tale of 10 women who broke down barriers to break the news. No 10. Mary Roberts Reinhardt, 1876 to 1958. Though best remembered for her later mystery novels in 1915, Mary Roberts Reinhardt persuaded her Saturday Evening Post editor to send her to Europe as a foreign correspondent, which made her the first American journalist at the battle lines of World War I. The British denied her access to the front, but she convinced the Belgian Red Cross that her training as a nurse would enable her to inform American readers about the condition of Belgian soldiers. When a colonel warned her that she would not always be comfortable in the war zone, she replied, I don't want to be comfortable. No 9. Gerda Taro, 1910-1937 Born in Stuttgart to Polish Jews, Goethe Porel left Germany in 1933 after anti-Jewish boycotts ruined her father's business. In Paris, another refugee from Germany introduced her to photojournalism. After learning her trade as a darkroom assistant, she got a job with a photographic agency, partnered with a Hungarian photographer, who called himself Robert Capo, and took for herself the name Gerda Taro. In the summer of 1936, she and Capo went to Spain, where civil war raged between its democratically elected leftist government and Francisco Franco, backed by Hitler and Mussolini. Taro traveled fearlessly across the country to visually document the plight of the Republic's poorly equipped soldiers, the bombing of Madrid, civilians fleeing Franco's advance, and the courage of everyday Spaniards. Her dramatic photos were published in London, Zurich, France, and even Nazi Germany. No 8. Dorothy Thompson, 1893-1961 In addition to being the first female Central European bureau chief for the New York Evening Post and Philadelphia Public Ledger, Dorothy Thompson was also the first American journalist to be kicked out of Nazi Germany. Based on her exclusive interview with Hitler in 1931, she published a highly critical essay in Cosmopolitan magazine, which grew into the book I Saw Hitler, 1933, after he became chancellor. Thompson continued to write about the increasing threat of fascism and its anti-Semitic policies, prompting her expulsion from the Third Reich in 1934 at the direction of Hitler himself. No. 7. Margaret Bork White, 1904-1971 Margaret Bork White's photos put human faces on important stories of her era. As an industrial photographer in 1930, she was the first foreigner granted unlimited access to the Soviet Union. There, her eye turned from the machinery to the people behind it. She later documented the rise of Nazism in Central Europe, as well as social injustice at home preserving images of German ironworkers, southern sharecroppers, and Midwestern farmers, ravaged by the Dust Bowl. In 1936, Bork White was one of the first four staff photographers hired by Life magazine, and her work graced its debut cover. No. 6. Martha Gellhorn, 1908-1998 Martha Gellhorn shifted her writing's focus to foreign affairs in 1937 during the Spanish Civil War. Serving as a witness to its human drama, her stories came alive with the sights and sounds of the bombing of Barcelona and tanks rolling into Madrid, as well as tales of combat soldiers and the wounded in hospitals. While in Spain, Galhorn reunited with Ernest Hemingway, whom she had met in Key West, Florida the year before. They married in 1940 but divorced five years later. In between, Galhorn reported on the war between Japan and China, the Allied effort in Italy and the Battle of the Bulge. No. 5. Maggie Higgins, 1920-1966 Marguerite Maggie Higgins secured a European reporting assignment in the last days of World War II, where she excelled at the grueling job of interviewing newly liberated concentration camp survivors. 
Her coverage of the Nuremberg trials and the Soviet takeover of Czechoslovakia in Poland led to her promotion to Berlin bureau chief. Higgins's transfer to the Tokyo bureau, then considered a backwater, positioned her to be one of the first reporters on the scene when war broke out on the Korean peninsula. There, she proved herself also unafraid to fight military brass for access to the battlefield. Her bravery, which some called recklessness, prompted a Marine general to bar her from the front lines, but she appealed successfully to General Douglas MacArthur, commander of United Nations forces. No. 4. Alice Allison Dunnigan, 1906-1983 The daughter of a Kentucky tenant farmer and a mother who took in Wash Alice Dunnigan left teaching and moved to Washington, D.C. in 1942 to work for the Department of Labor. After the war, she reported for the Associated Negro Press, a and agency that covered issues for black-owned weeklies nationwide. In August 1947, she became the first black female journalist Link 18, credentialed to cover Congress in the White House. Even as a NP's Washington bureau chief, Dunnigan faced wage discrimination because of her gender. When her boss refused to fund her expenses to accompany President Truman's 1948 whistle-stop tour, she borrowed the $1,000 necessary. No. 3. Ethel Payne, 1911-1991 Ethel Payne aspired to be a civil rights lawyer, but was denied entry to the University of Chicago Law School because of her race. While working at the Army Special Services Club in Korea, she kept a diary that described the segregation and racism experienced by black troops stationed there. Excerpts from her diary were published in the black-owned Chicago Defender, leading her to a full-time job with that newspaper in 1951. Payne joined Alice Dunnigan in the White House press corps, questioning President Eisenhower on issues related to civil rights until he refused to call on her. The White House press secretary tried to invalidate her press credentials and have her tax returns investigated. No. 2. Dorothy Foldheim, 1893-1989 Dorothy Foldheim joined TV in its infancy as the nation's first female TV news anchor. She was already experienced on local radio and as an interviewer and public speaker when Cleveland's first commercial TV station hired her before it hit the airways in 1947. Channel 5 gave Foldheim the job as a 13-week temp until it could find a man to replace her. She stayed with the program for 37 years. No one. Marlene Sanders, 1931 to 2015. Marlene Sanders left her mark on broadcast journalism from both sides of the camera. After working briefly in theater in 1955, she took a job as assistant to the producer of a news program on a small New York City TV station. Sanders worked her way up to assistant news director of WNEW Radio in New York, where she wrote and produced documentaries. During 14 years as a correspondent for ABC News, she covered the assassination of Robert Kennedy and the riots at the 1968 Democratic National Convention. She was the first TV network newswoman to report from Vietnam. In 1964, Sanders became the first woman to anchor a national TV news broadcast when she filled in for an ailing Ron Cochran. For three months in 1971, she took over for Sam Donaldson as the anchor of ABC's Weekend News.